is Miranda Mardian. And my name is Haley Jenner. Today is September 1st, 2005. And today we will be giving you the story about the tragic Hurricane Katrina that devastated many people just days ago. The hurricane killed approximately 1,800 people and had water levels of up to 34 feet. The horrible conditions caused approximately $100 billion in damage. The storm left thousands of people homeless. New Orleans, most of which lies below sea level, quickly flooded. It suffered some of the worst damage and loss of life. About 80% of the city was flooded, and approximately 1,500 out of 1,800 people who died because of the storm were from New Orleans. The hurricane started out as a tropical depression near the Bahamas in the Caribbean Sea on August 23rd. Tropical depressions are just low-pressured areas surrounded by winds that start to blow in a circular pattern. The storm got stronger and moved west. It then struck the southern tip of Florida, hitting wind speeds of 120 kilometers per hour. The storm went through Florida and continued to grow stronger while heading west into the Gulf of Mexico. By the August 28th, the storm started moving northwest towards New Orleans, Louisiana, getting wind speeds of up to 160 kilometers an hour. By the morning of the 29th, Katrina hit the Gulf Coast with wind speeds up to a huge 200 kilometers an hour. The communities that were hit included Bay St. Louis, Biloxi, Gulfport, Pascagoula, Dauphin Island and Mobile in Alabama. The thing that hit these places so hard is because of its landscapes. Florida is very flat with a rolling landscape. Its lowest points are at sea level where it meets the Atlantic Ocean and the Gulf of Mexico. Louisiana got hit the hardest. That's where the hurricane made landfall. Louisiana is quite low with a lot of marshland around the rivers. It also has a gently rolling landscape. Hurricanes tend to hit hardest in areas with much water and on flat land. And now we have some footage of the hurricane in action. Storms as severe as this one usually occur because of ample heat and moisture that exist primarily over warm tropical oceans. There must be a warm layer of water at the top of the sea. This warm seawater evaporates. The moisture then condenses forming clouds. As it condenses, it releases heat that warms the air, causing the air to rise. Of relatively low atmospheric pressure. Air tends to move from areas of high pressures to areas of low pressure, which creates wind. Earth's rotation can cause the wind to swirl as it blows in a low pressure area. In the northern hemisphere, these winds swirl counterclockwise. In the southern hemisphere, winds rotate clockwise. This effect is called the Coriolis effect. The Coriolis effect increases in intensity farther from the equator. To reduce the swirling winds of a hurricane, a low pressure area must be more than 5 degrees of latitude north or south of the equator. As the swirling winds increase in speed, more ocean water evaporates and condenses. The moisture releases more heat, warming up the storm's core. The warm air rises faster, increasing surface wind speeds and so on. This cycle is called a positive feedback loop. When friction between the air and the water surface becomes great enough, the hurricane stops now, intensifying. Like previously shot interview, with one of the victims of Hurricane Katrina. She's a farmer from Louisiana and was nice enough to talk to us about her experience with this horrible storm. Hello, I'm Miranda Mardian. And I'm Haley Jennack. We're from Channel 5 News and we've come to ask you a few questions. So, how has Hurricane Katrina affected you in general? All my crops are ruined, all my animals are dead, and it's taken a huge toll on the farm. Oh, well that's a shame. Would you mind showing us around the farm? You know what's left? Um, I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to raise my voice. Follow me. Well, this used to be my farm. As you can see, it's a disaster and all my animals are dead. Well, we're sorry about what happened to you. Do you think you'll be able to recover from the damage? Does it look like I'm going to be able to recover myself? Stop asking some questions! Ma'am, mm. we are just trying to gather some information. No need to raise your voice at us. Again, to help people in these situations, you can donate money, organize a school fundraiser, or a community event. You can donate clothes, food, or other items. Start off small. You don't need a big group of people. Every donation, regardless of size, helps to rebuild communities hit by natural disasters such as this one. Are you guys almost done here? Um, yes. Thank you for your time. Let's go back to the studio. Now we will give you information on how to prepare for such extreme storms. First off, secure your home. Have proper home insurance and put money into strengthening parts of your home that could be affected. Make ditches, have a working sump pump, reinforce your roofs, windows, and doors. Construction experts can help advise you in exactly what you need to make your house safe. 
Try to have a backup generator and always develop a family plan. Make sure everyone knows and understands what to do. Have safe exits and meeting places, a designated person to pick up kids if you're not there, and emergency contacts. Make sure you have your health information and a place for pets if you have any. You need to know the risks of your region if, if you should be worried about severe weather conditions. Know the locations of your fire extinguisher, water valve, electrical box, gas valve, and floor drain. Also, create an emergency supply kit. Always have extra non-perishable food, water, flashlights, extra clothes, blankets, a first aid kit, toiletries, a cell phone, and extra money. Make sure you are able to get to the latest weather updates and try having a battery-operated radio, and always have plenty Specifically of batteries. Specifically to hurricanes, you should learn about them and find out if they are a threat to you. Buy plywood or shutters for your windows, trim trees to lessen flying debris, and find out if you live in a hurricane evacuation zone by contacting your local emergency management office. Determine the nearest substantial low-rising building outside of flood zones to which you can evacuate an official public shelter, a hotel, or a friend's or relative's home. Test emergency equipment such as generators and flashlights. And as we said before, assemble a hurricane survival kit. Obtain emergency supplies now to be self-sufficient during the storm and its potentially lengthy aftermath. If you wait until a hurricane is on your doorstep to buy those items, they will be in a very short supply or even completely unavailable. Personally, I think we should all take into account our surroundings and make sure we are prepared for any storm that is to come our way. We should all know what is capable of happening around our home and be prepared. I believe everyone should follow these directions to further their chances of staying safe during any severe weather conditions. We would like to keep as many safe people safe as possible. I'm Miranda Mardian. And I'm Haley Jednak. This is the Channel 5 News reporting to you live. Good night, everyone.